Welcome to the Dirt Shed Show. It's Friday, it's the weekend. Yes. It's time to get into bikes. <laughs> um, it's me, Martin Ashton, Rich Payne. Bonjour, everybody. And we've got Doddy on the side. Whoa. That's a side oh. order. He's writing some scripts over there uh, on the sofa. I'm actually um, not here. I'm actually just using the sofa because it's a bit noisy upstairs. Uh, yeah. Well, I think yeah. you're in for it today, then, but well, we'll you've see. timed that badly. Not, not Can't be as bad as Doddy's week. not here. <laughs> Can't be bad. Right, here we go with the show this week. We mm. have got a lot coming up, but yep. this first part of the show, Rich, is tough. We're going to decide. I don't know how we're going to do this. <sighs> we're going to decide what is the most important and influential bike in each mountain biking category or discipline okay yeah so this is tough so the disciplines okay. are the bike itself what have we got um enduro downhill xc trials slope style and free ride whoa it's a lot That's of work. some categories this is a heck of a i'm one. sure that guy's gonna have some opinions on it too well, not opinions, facts, maybe. <laughs> but, oh, no way, because I know what these bikes are, right? Let's start it off, right? Okay, Because this is a big subject, Rich. Um, uh, about 2015, we did a video similar to this where we looked at the most influential bikes. Right. And the bikes that come up then were like the Breezer, like one of the original Joe Breeze uh, okay, yeah. uh, bikes. Yeah, I um, get you. Specialised stump jumper. Classic. Okay, so these are bikes that are sort of like originating mountain bikes and originating yeah. like manufacturing like the mountain OGs, bikes. aren't they? Kona Syndicone, Yeti C26, GT oh. Zaska. I think that could still be in there now. Oh, I would agree, actually. Um, the Velici FS works. Not a clue what that is. That is a, a bike that basically lots of brands kind of bought them in and rebranded. Is that right, Doddy? Velici, Velici, Velici. Was, the, was the original brand bike. That bike. Right, so the frame was oh. designed by, well, it's made by Marzocchi, essentially. It's their factory. Yes, really? And it was made for the sole purpose of testing their shocks and forks on before it was released as a bike. Oh. And the, uh, Dave Cullinan was the first downhill mountain bike world champ to win on a full suspension bike, and he won on that bike. He was riding for Iron Horse on a hard tail yeah. at the time, and he saw one in the car park, basically in the pits, <laughs> had a go on it, rang up Iron Horse, was like, Get me that bike, put your stickers on it, and I win worlds. And, and he did. did, and he did. Wow. And then off the back of that, every team that didn't have full suspension bike used that frame, put their stickers on it. Yeah, wow. I mean, I first mean, mass produced down a bike. You would have seen a Kona with that on. You would have yeah. seen. You would have with what a Valici Kona. I got Valici Saracen. Wow, Valici Saracen. It was Rob Warner and Steve Peach's spare bike. Yes, Perfect. yes. Video Gosh. coming up soon. What about the mountain cycle San Andreas? Oh, crazy, oh. like. Phew. So ahead of its time. Yeah, that but, was a good looking bike as well. But did that bike really, did it really spark a bike beyond it? I'm not sure it was a game changer. Was, no, but all of the tech on it. Yeah. Uh, right, I had floating discs. It first bike to have hydraulic discs on, full yeah. stop. And then floating discs, okay. pro stops on there. Um, the GTLTS, that's something else that was yes, mentioned it's got to be in there. our video. Intense M1. See, now I feel like that's yes. a slightly that's more classic. modern day Velici. Do you remember yes. lots yes. of brands yes. rebranded an M1 yes. and yep. used them themselves? Muddy Fox, yes. Giant, yeah, loads Paro. of guys did. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the Honda RN01. Got to but, be in there. But that's just, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, that's it's a weird one. It's still in there, I think. So, I don't know if it was influential, though. What? No, well, it didn't, nothing what? came of it. Who, who's, who's gone there? Like, the RN01 uh, is important. High pivot, gearbox bike. Well, basically, had a derailleur in a box, but. So, Rich, um, <laughs> okay. you're the man of focus right now, right? Because we're going to get Doddy's expert opinion right. on this in a bit. What do you think is the most influential bike? Or the most influential bikes across these categories? Oh. I mean, XC for you, because you, you're a man who's done a bit of XC as well. I, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think is one of the most influential XC bikes? It is got... Uh... What do you think about Scott Spark? Yeah, I do. Yeah? And the Spesh Epic as well. Won a few races. Both Ooh. of those. Those are the most successful XC bikes out there. Mm. And I think those two, being so dominant, push everyone else along. Yeah, And yeah. make everyone up their game. I... This is going to be hard to define. Yeah. It Scott, is. Scott Spark. I, I was thinking because I mean, there's categories I can handle. Like, say the yeah. trials, the trials category. It's a small category, but influential. Okay, because most of the world who aren't mountain bikers discover mountain biker, mountain biking through trials riders, whether you yeah. guys like it or not. Hans Ray, Danny McCaskill, Fabio Widmer, they are the most Ryan viewed Leach. cyclists. I remember watching Ryan Leach. We all know one. They're the most the most viewed mountain bikers on the planet, so hence they are influential. Does so this return in bike sales, though? Their Probably bikes not. count, okay? No, but they, yeah. they influence bike sales in general. Hans Ray does and did. And, yeah. yeah, and Danny Mac does. Danny Mac does. Santa Cruz are doing pretty good. Pretty they don't good. sell that. Yeah, they don't they sell, don't sell that one, yeah. 
No, and it's said, no, but they said Santa Cruz inspired oh, bikes for individual. Yeah. Come on, that's like saying that pe the only people who bought GTs bought Zascars. Of course, they, they did. pretty much did. Yeah, they did. I think. <laughs> no, no. Canyon don't no. make that. Canyon don't actually make their trials bike either, do they? No, that's isn't no. that a canyon inspired? No, they don't. But they're all inspired. <laughs> no, 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 the canyon I feel is so not inspired. inspired right now. <laughs> the canyon inspired, but but touching on the inspired, I think the trials category is easy because I think at this it's point, so small, that's why it's easy. Th this point, <laughs> right? I think you would have to say you're a. F <laughs> yeah. uh, right. At inspired, this point, five bikes, and that was the market covered. <laughs> this point, still pushing you would have to say, you would have to say the inspired <laughs> is the most influential trials bike because just because of the sheer weight of numbers, and it has influenced the Santa Cruz um, prototype and the Canyon prototype. So trials done. <laughs> trials is a character in itself, but there is a bike in. Possibly cross country, yeah, and other categories, mountain biking in general, in the Zascar that also fits in trials. So the Zascars kind of making a bit of a uh, a vote for that. You're still chin wagging about that Zascar, but as far as hardtails go, you can't not have a Santa Cruz Chameleon in there. Agreed, I because that was a jump bike. It was a cross country bike. It yeah. was a single speed bike. If you didn't like yeah. your knees. It could be anything. I, I remember having a chameleon and it actually evolving. So I put a dropper no. on it when droppers came out. No. It was a jump bike at one point. Most influential. Not most the, maybe important. not the most influential. This one is off. nuts. Yeah, this I think is it's nuts. up there. Yeah. Guys, right, this topic's getting out of hand, but we've got to go to the news, OK? Right? Uh. So we, we've got to get to the news. So let's go to the news. And then when we come back from the news, I've got a proper expert. Whoa to give us some info on what is the most important influential right. bike well, in right. mountain biking. I'm so intrigued. there's an expert coming up after news, but first, over to you, Tom. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Dirt Shed News. We're kicking things off this week with the results of the Cape Epic. After eight stages of gruelling XC marathon racing across South Africa, 620 kilometers, over 15,000 vertical meters of climbing, the results came down to just minutes. In the men's race, it was Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers taking victory, just nine minutes up on Martin Frey and Simon Stabian of Germany, and 14 minutes ahead of Hans Becking and Jose Diaz in third. It was Sina Frey and Laura Stigger on the top spot for the women's race, incredibly winning all eight stages. Candice Lille and Marika Strauss finished second, 41 minutes back, followed up by Ariane Luthi and Robin de Groot with a 52 minute deficit. Over such a huge distance with so much climbing and descending, those are some pretty tight margins. Also, sorry if I butchered any of those names there. Just in time for smelly kit season, there's a new anti-odor spray from Markov. Spray a bit of it on helmets, boots, gloves, pads and such to keep them running odor-free throughout the winter season. Who here do you think could benefit the most from that, Matt? Toffee Dan. Toffee Dan, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Canyon Spectrals are now available in more wheel sizes. Yep, full 29er, full 27.5, and now mixed wheel setups are available on the 150mm trail bike chassis. They've grown the family somewhat, offering the Spectral Young Hero a double extra small aluminium youth bike for $2,299. Then there's alloy frames, which weigh just under three kilos in either 27.5 or 29 options, as well as carbon. The mullet offering is available on the CF8 Collective model, which comes with a coil and a Fox Elite 36 for $4,899. They tweak the suspension a little to mimic the sender, upping progression, lowering pedal kickback, and upping anti-squat too all while subtly tweaking the geometry to keep things modern. In the mountain bike world next week, we have the long-awaited return of Quang... Quang Quacks. Quang Works. In the mountain bike world next week, we have the long-awaited return of Quang Works Rotorua. For the first time ever, Rotorua signifies the closing event of the Quang Works season rather than the opening. Basman Steenbergen has a healthy points lead in the race to become king of Quang Works for the first time so just needs to keep things clean in order to take the win. Via Verbeek also has a commanding lead going into Rotorua, hoping to reclaim her crown from 2019. Since Baz and Via are also a couple, it would be rad to see them claim the king and queen titles together this year, definitely establishing themselves as mountain biking's ultimate power couple, as well as securing the king and queen bonus prize pots of 20,000 Canadian dollars each. The slopestyle season will also be concluded in Rotorua. Emma Johansson is currently sitting on a five event winning streak, so it's kind of hard to see it going any other way right now. He's after the coveted Triple Crown award and the $25,000 bonus that goes with that. Regatkin is currently the only winner of the Triple Crown, a feat he managed back in 2018. Johansson publicly declined his entry to Rampage in order to focus on this, so we're all rooting to see him rise and ride to the occasion. Crankworks Rotorua begins on Monday the 1st of November, running through until Sunday the 8th. 
We'll have an update on the news next week, but you can keep up with it all via the Crankworx website. Thanks very much, and Tom, good news. Uh, right, it's time to get an expert opinion mm. on what is the most influential, important bike. Okay. Um, so, Doddy, yeah. do one. Oh. <laughs> Right. Doddy, do one, because we've got a proper expert coming in. Get out of your seat. Oh, yes! Oh. Steve Jones! <laughs> Hello, listen Steve. to him, Steve! Listen to him! That crowd goes wild. Oh, listen to him. That's oh. boring. Oh, yes. Steve Jones. Mate, look, we're trying to come up with the most influential and important mm. mountain bikes, not bike, mountain bikes, Multiple. in the sport. You've got to have an opinion on this. What is the most? Give us one of them. <laughs> Of all of them. Uh, well, we, having been listening to you do conversations the last five minutes, I'm thinking, are you coming at it from the right angle? I mean, could it be not just the bike, but the product on the bike that actually made the bike? What? Uh, for example, you know, the Enduro, Specialized Enduro, maybe it was the Fox 36 that enables Specialized to oh. make that bike, which is so game-changing. Oh, this, oh. this is a game-changing uh, one. Didn't Specialized Enduro have the name Enduro before Enduro Racing was Enduro Racing? Good point. That's what? Good point, good point. They were ahead of the curve there. They were ahead of the curve. Uh, let me move on from Enduro bikes to downhill bikes. So now oh, no. the Intense M1, right? Yeah. Intense yes. M1. I'm yeah. coming back yeah. in. Yeah. Intense M1. Oh, I'm back yes. in. I like, I like this. this. I like What's this. What's going on now? Yeah. The Intense M1. Yeah. Uh, if we bear in mind, it had a massive history. You had likes of Tope from 1994 to 2004. You had likes of Tomac. Greg Minar won on a Harrow in 2003. Was yeah. ultimately an intense yeah, yeah. bike. Sam Hill won on intense. GF Times yeah. yeah. 2004. Yeah. You know the last one. But then what happened after that? You know, we went to the VPP design. Now a lot of people think the VPP design is is a is a Santa Cruz thing, but. Santa Cruz went to Intense to ask them to make bikes with a VPP design because they were considered to be at the top of the game at the time. So they didn't buy it though. They didn't design they, they it. They were bought they were given it, I think. Outland, yeah. Anyway, that's just VPP. But mm. what I'm getting to is the fact that Intense were influential, so it is an influential brand. So when you look at the, the product as well, look at 29-inch wheels. Jeff Steber yeah. made 20, a 29-inch wheel it's downhill bike. A decade bike before anyone else. Yeah. In 2010. Off, so I yeah. think Easter the product off. is as equally as important as the, the, the bike itself. 100%, myself. I'd go over there. Yeah. God, he talks some oh, shit, doesn't he? Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I can try. <laughs> When's the expert coming on? I can trump this stuff, though. I've got the most influential bike next door. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Let's go right now. Let's go. Right then. Doddy, what are we looking at? Okay, so this really is where mountain biking came from. Okay, so all over, the, all over the world, lots of people are doing this, but this is the story. So this is technically the first commercially sold mountain bike, or bike as we know as a mountain bike, that left America and came to the UK. Look at that. This it, very bike. This bike was built by Gary Fisher by himself in, in 1976. No. Yeah, it's been confirmed. And as well as starting the mountain bike movement, arguably, it's also the reason why mountain biking started on 26. Now, everything is original, apart from the grips that perished and the tyres. But these are the original tyres. Wow. Uni Royal Nobbies, 26 by 2.125. They've been down repack, and that is why we had 26 amazing. inch. Because they were good enough, and it was easier to use them and develop the rest. Do you know what I think this bike has got, which is missing on most of today's bikes? A bit of leather and steel. <laughs> yes! Okay. There's that's a lot, lot of steel on this amazing. old Brooks saddle. And I was just looking at this. Look at that quick release. So look, the, look, look, I mean, essentially. Look, the thing with this is, this is how well made these bikes were. It still works. So these bikes were an amalgamation of parts. So the frames were beach cruiser frames from like the 30s. Yeah. Um, this particular one, I, as far as I know, is the only one that Gary Fisher built that's not Whoa. Schwinn. So I forget the actual brand is. The fork oh and the God. stem, Ashtabula, <laughs> handlebars and motocross bars. They're two right hand shifters. They're two different motorcycle levers, Sturmy hubs. Uh, 40 mil rims on there. Four in French 171 mil alloy cranks. <laughs> and look at the way the rear hanger is just bolted on. Because oh, yeah. it, it wouldn't have had gears on this at all. It would have been a single speed at one point. Tell you what, <laughs> I don't know what motocross bike those bars come off of. But <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted to ridden it. Look at the bend in that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that could be definitely one of the most influential mountain bikes. Influential ever. class of bike because yeah, we all sure. kind of nod back to where these. Yeah. Came from, but I love the I love the story behind this one being the first oh. one that arrived in Europe. That's it's good candidate, amazing. Doddy. Good Very candidate. Special. Can we go back to the ship now? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Come on. Get this bad boy back on the wind. Right. Okay. So um, 
I don't really think we're going to get to a resolution here, lads, because, Doddy, you're saying it's some old thing in your shed. Yeah. You're saying it's the M1, are you, Steve? I don't... He was saying it was a set of forks, I thought. Oh, God. What did you say it was? You said it was a Scott Park. And I think it's the Intense Inspired. No, the Inspired Intense. <laughs> you know what what it's called. It. It's for cross country. Trials, for cross country. I didn't say the most influential bike. Well, <laughs> an influential bike. Because it is, Steve, isn't it? Danny McCaskill's bike is influential in, in mountain biking. No, I don't think it is. I think Danny McCaskill's influential. I don't think his bike is. <laughs> You're going to hurt his feelings. Uh -oh. You're going to hurt his feelings. A whole separate video. Uh, yeah, oh, no. <laughs> Mar oh, no. I take it back, Mark. I take it back. Mark. Mark. Martin. No! Martin had a bike and a bike with his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one of the most influential trials bikes is the uh, Ashton Justice, but that's just my opinion, <laughs> OK? And you could argue that the Ashton Head Tongue was the precursor to the Inspired 24. I mean, it's just my opinion. Yeah. Let's just go through the categories quick, right. just quickly. OK, the most influential bike is the Velocipede, Steve. Do you know what? I've got a farmer friend of mine who's got one in his shed. What? Really? 100% true. Is he on? A real one. No, one of the original ones. The I mean, one, wait, one wow. of the original well, there is, I mean, there is one, is in, there is one in Drumlander Castle in Scotland, isn't there? But this farmer... Oh, yeah, there is. I he know just that. happens to He up. has got one <laughs> in his garden. Yeah, so he's oh. I'm I serious. That? I could not believe it when I saw it. Wow. Are you sure it's just not some old I didn't mate? expect that to be quite as much of a curveball to you guys yeah, as I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the Velocity, <laughs> that's in there. OK, yeah. XC bike, we, oh, could we agree on the Scott Spark? I think that's yeah, 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 I think that's pretty but essential. In terms of downhill trials and free ride, we're nowhere in agreement. Mm. Trials don't count. Tri what is trials? <laughs> what is cross country? Hey, oh! <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, look. Here's it's my old suggestion. school down country. <laughs> here's, here's my suggestion. I don't think we're going to get a resolution on this today in the Dirt Shed Show, but I think we can. So why don't we do another video on this another day? Because me and Rich have got on with well, a show. We do have a show to do. We've got a show to do. So, guys, Doddy, I think you're sticking around. Steve, get the f out of here, Yeah, go on. Like, it's my money. Get out. Get uh, out. Right. We're going to come back to this topic on another day in a video of its own right. Yeah. Um, but for now, Rich, let's get on with the show. Tallyo. Crikey. Okay, <laughs> hacks and bodges. Doddy, you're going to stick around for hacks and bodges? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. excellent nice. stuff. Let's get going with this show. Right. Um, first up, we've got Gavin. Who, now, I think this is an overbuild, Rich. What okay. do you think of this? Okay, so it's like a little hook 3D print that holds this uh, bike, uh, what is it, bum bag on the yeah. bottom of this Saddle seat? Bag. Saddle bag. Saddle bag. Yeah. The obvious word. Obviously. Um, what do you think on that? It's a nice 3D print. Is this yeah. an overbuild, Doddy? It's a lot, isn't it's it? It's snazzy. Everyone's got a 3D printer now, haven't they? They, they have, haven't they? Yeah. Everybody's got a 3D printer these days. Everyone watches the Dirt Shed Show. You know what? They printer. do, don't they? Yeah. You know Everyone what? does. We need a 3D printer. I we should we start do. 3D printing yeah. some shit. Get one in the text out right now. I'd love to. I've got a text out. Get one in here. Yes. We need a, we need <laughs> a 3D printer. Um, we're going to get on that. Um, so on Gavin's build, what we're saying is this: a, it's definitely a hack. It's not a bodge, but it's, I just that's a good old hack. That one. It's an awful lot. Ain't though. no bodging going on with a three D printer. Well, there probably is, but yeah. Um, but it's, it's pretty good. It's yeah, pretty good. Nice um, next one, I love this build of uh, oh lord Mark's bike rack. What I particularly like about it, guys, is it swings out so you can still access the back of the car. Oh, so you can get in. But look, yeah, so that's kind of like that thing that Blake made. Yeah, yeah, it, it's inspired by Blake's build. Yeah. Um, it's really great. Five bikes you can hang on that. That's Although, some weight, isn't it? Yeah. Does it look strong enough to hold five bikes? It looks... Is it, is it mounted on the toe ball? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Then it, yeah it it's, right. and then it pivots out from that so that you can open the boot up. That's a lot of weight with five bikes on, isn't it? Yeah. But fair, that's a good bit of engineering he's done there. Yeah, and like isn't it great, isn't it great that the Blake's inspiring people, that's over in Brisbane in Australia. It says he made that with a 3D printer. No. <laughs> oh, Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Right, next up, I love this. This is my right. favourite type of hack or this is definitely a bodge. Oh, God. Okay, so this yeah. is a little flip switch. Flip. Oh, the what? chip. Have a look chip, at that. Chip, Have a look at chip. that, Doddy. It's the flip chip for oh, Yes. Like that. So basically, he had to uh, fashion one. So he's used some, that's cardboard. He's used some cardboard and a bolt. Oh, my lord. It's an ugly fix. But I love it. Wow. So 
what happened? A captive nut took a flyer and he's like, yeah, I, yeah, guess, I guess, I uh, guess. Uh, 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 let's have a gander. Well, mine's just have this. See one? Yeah, one yeah. just fell off in the fell middle off. of the desert. Threadlock's a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good suggestion. Oh, wow. Good suggestion. <laughs> what, what are you thinking, mate? So are you thinking? Well, you've do you got, know what? You've got to give away a race top to this guy. Oh, well, I like Gavin's. Simple, bit of 3D printing. It's good, it's useful. Yeah. Uh, Chris the Wall's obviously got him home. Really good idea. Mm. But the engineering on Mark's bike rack, I think it's got to take it. Really? Yeah, I'm going for amazing. Mark. Can I, can I just jump in before you warn him? I do oh. agree it's amazing. It probably is the best one. It's a bit above a hack and a bosh, though, isn't it? It is. It's more of a build. Yeah. It's more like, of a build. It is man. Amazing. I mean, am I being overruled here? Yeah. I feel like oh, you are. Okay. okay. Chris the Bosch. I think you made a good choice, but that, that's like you need another category, Martin. What, People are actually making hack stuff hack bodges and builds. Yeah. Hack bodge or build. I like that. I think oh. it's really cool. I like that. And so I'd, do we I'd go, go with Gavin, Gavin now then? But who owns a 3D printer and just goes, oh, I'll print 3D printer. Well, let's see. Well, well, I tell you what, one. let's go. Chris, Chris the Well done, mate. Boom. <laughs> That's how you get what you want. Well, you went from one end to the That's other there. That's how you get what you want. Nice, I like it. Well done, Chris the You're a winner. There's a GMB race stop on its way to you now. Well, the chaos continues. Look at this photo from last <laughs> week. When did you take the boy out? <laughs> Every now and then, you know, when he's not misbehaving. Love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And we got some great captions for it. Um, we are giving away a GMBN mug. We have. Where's the stunt mug? There it is. Well, we have, we have uh, a look out. Here's the stunt mug. We've got two cameras to hit today. Um, we, <laughs> are, we are giving away a GMBN mug um, for the best caption. And our first one this week is from Jens Bruggeman, who says, this was not what the bike industry meant when they talk about a slacker head tube. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. That's pretty good. That is really it's good. It's a strong start. It's yeah. maybe too clever for the dirt show. <laughs> yeah, it could be but messed, We need yeah. to go more. OK, so the next one, Computer Bob 06. Jack, our oh, cameraman, Jack and Doddy turn up to a Star Wars convention <laughs> as R2-D2 and Chewbacca, but suddenly realise they've forgotten their costumes. Wow. Well, <laughs> that's, that's I can imagine Jack in a, little, in a little, you know, R2-D2. That's, to be fair, that's what he sounds like most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's getting a rinse. Right here, anyway. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. That might be cutting it a bit close to the Warwick Davis reference Whoa. there. We might have to move oh, on. But hold on, no one else out there knows about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yes. you know. That's that a whole separate thing. <laughs> Right, I'll keep quiet on that one. Um, next one is from lolboy04, and he says, when they need a rider 20 years old and a 25 years of experience. That's about right, actually. <sighs> that's about right. Combined experience. Yeah, 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 yeah that's about right. <laughs> um, and last one, this is a classic for you, Doddy. You should have that one. Look at that last one. Can you see it? You haven't got oh, it. No, no. He hasn't got it there. No, oh, yeah. we know. Well, it's, here we go. Ant, Ant Chan 46. He says, little bouncing around on the trail, no problem. Cable ties. Whoa. <laughs> boom. Is it boom Strap cable ties down. or boom it's, zip ties? It's not a boom cable ties. Well, I could have done something to shut him up. To be yeah, yeah, that was duct tape. Yeah, well, yeah, cable ties, <laughs> duct tape. Yeah. Fan, fantastic captions this week. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna award the winner. Go on, then. Um, because I've got the best cut throw on me. I'm going <laughs> with, I'm going with Jens Brueggemann with his slacker head tube. Fantastic, Excellent. Jens. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just did that with those bikes again. It's a good job, it's a metal mug. It didn't even get close, but there's You've taken the head tube off Jack's bike down there. It's missing a head tube. Jack's bike hasn't survived. Yes, here's this week's caption contest photo. Check that out. Wow. I want the best caption you've got for that. Send it in. You could be getting yourself a stunt mug next week. Good luck. Jesus! Right, coming up on the channel, what should I say, channels? Multiple. This week, yeah. we've got... Yeah. Rich, what can we look forward to? What have you been filming recently well, that's going to be good? The gang. Yes. We've all been out of Madrid. God, lucky. Ah, it was lucky. all right. It was all right. And we rode some gnarly trails. Postman's and... holiday. Yeah. <laughs> you can't give me a paste oh. in for this. <laughs> but we rode some pretty wild trails, and we got a good POV run coming up for you, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But what about you, Doddy? Um, I think it's got to be the Halloween video Ooh, on yes. tech. Ooh. Killer bikes. Yes, uh, Martin's bikes. joining me for that one. Yes, oh, very, very fun. Um, so some great vids coming up on the channel as always, so make sure you don't miss out. Okay, into oh. the bike vault this week. is exhausting, <laughs> isn't it? This, um, first bike is from, oh, it's a beauty. It's it from is. Thomas, Cannondale F800. <laughs> it is lovely. Have you put this in here? 
Maybe. Maybe. Okay, it is I'll very nice. I'll tell you what it is. Ooh. It's, it's oh, dripping. Yes. Super Whoa. nice. That's what it is. There's nothing else to be said about it. It's in Sweden, that one. That's... What about this next one from Nando? Whoa. So, a 2020 YT Jeff C, but it's it based on the Subaru, classic Subaru rally car design. I like it. I do you like know that what that would, do, would finish that for me? Go on. Gold wheels. Old school Scooby style. Mm, Gold mess, wheels on that. Don't mess with coloured wheels on mountain bikes. No, no, but if you're going for the Subi colour scheme. I'm with Rich, I'm with Rich. Imagine some Dottie. gold wheels on that. Yeah, that would look Can't good. Can't you just make the noise when you like? Super nice. Look at this. Um, a Kingdom Hex. Kingdom Hex from Matt. Oh, I do like Kingdom bikes. Ty are they tight? Donnie, tell yeah. us about it. Yeah, Is it good? On. It's made of tie. That, that makes it, it great. It's just beautiful. Mm. Really hard stuff to work with, isn't it? Mm. It's a very, very expensive bike. I, I ring the bell, yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very Lovely, nice. super nice. Well done, Matt. David. David's YT Izzo Pro Race. <laughs> In Sickleville, New Jersey. That's where Do Toff should live there. <laughs> <laughs> Toff's got to move there uh, right away. Toff, to president Sicklerville. of Sickleville. Um, that's <laughs> nice. I like the YT. It's nice. Uh, it's nice. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. A lot of gold on that one, though. Next up, G. G's NS Bike Snab. Yeah. Race ready. Said he got in the top 10 at this particular race as well. Pennell Hounds. Uh, Canada Heights. Canada uh, Heights yeah. in Swanley. You must have raced there. I think I have. Yeah. yeah. Canada. I used to ride motorcycle trials at Canada yeah, Heights. Yeah, yeah, Canada Heights. I'm going to go super nice, actually. Sorry, Sorry, mate. Super nice yeah, that, I like I the, the composure of the picture with the arch oh. in the back. Well, the bell has been rung. Yeah. Last one. I've okay. put this in here for Doddy. Look oh, at this, Doddy. Wow. Look, Look at this. Look at that. Yeah, but Stevens Murray oh, well, Baja from 1981. Look at that. Oh. He that said, he basically, this crazy. bike was on the way to the scrap when he found it, did a complete restore, scrubbing and cleaning the parts, new cables, solid ride. Look at the size of the chainring on the front Beauty. of that. It's, it's almost like a B-mix, isn't it? Yes. Like a I don't even know what that is. What's a sort of a mixture. mixture, a bit of oh. mixture. Yeah, it's it's sun made a 26 inch wheel cruiser and it kind of looks yeah. a bit like that. It's, it's, oh, okay. It's, 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 wow, yeah, no, it's, it's great to see something old and a great way to finish the bike vault this week. Yes. What a flipping show. Hell of a show. Um, man. Rich, thank you for being here. Doddy, thanks oh. for hanging out. Oh, that's all right, I'm actually trying to do my scripting. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Getting some jobs done. Yes. Um, we're going to play you out this week with a few. Uh, Accidental moments on mountain bikes. The best so, Rich, kind. hold tight, and until next week, we'll see you next time. Ooh.